cancelled. There's a... Here comes Raven! Oh my god, the triple stun! Massive Kiva's triple kill, quadra kill! Is this going to be the Penta? He's going to be delivered at this time! Penta That's going to be the first Raven in Hey everyone, and welcome to today's video. In this video, we're going to break down a game from Kingzone Dragon X Khan. Khan is undoubtedly the best top laner in the world, and he may even be able to surpass Faker as the best player in the world. In this game, Khan is going to be playing Camille against Gangplank. Thinking about these two champions, Camille loses most matchups because she gets pushed in, and Gangplank is annoying in nearly every matchup because he can harass with his Q. In this matchup, however, the roles are a bit different. Camille wins this matchup by countering Gangplank's harass, which is his biggest laning strength. She does this by sustaining with her W. With all this in mind, Khan will want to accomplish the following missions. If possible, he'll want to get ahead with Cheese before the lane starts. This is always a staple in Khan's solo queue play. Whenever Gangplank goes for Q harass, Khan wants to match it by hitting Gangplank with his W. He'll want to make sure that he doesn't get pushed in. This won't be too hard because Gangplank has poor wave clear, but he'll still need to remember to auto the wave. At the same time, he wants to make sure he doesn't overpush either. Khan will do well in this matchup when he has the wave more or less near the middle of the lane. With that all said, let's hop in. As we can see, Khan is here as Camille, hiding in this brush. This is a cheese, and it's one that you should definitely have in your back pocket when you don't have to leash. He's counting on Gangplank running through this path up the river, and if they have a melee range fight, Camille is going to win pretty hard. With those things in mind, it's pretty clear to see why he's sitting here. GP did end up walking up here, and he gets destroyed in the auto and auto and spell for spell trade. What happens next is really brutal, really simple, and really smart. Pay attention. Whenever you cheese your opponent, you should be always thinking about what they're going to do next. What is their line of play to follow up on what you've done to him? In this case, what is Gangplank going to do after getting bullied out of the river? Well, he's going to go to the lane so he can start laning phase. But what's the only way that he can get to lane now that you cancel them out of the river? So it might seem really simple and obvious, and that's because it is. Most really brutal plays that you can do in the early game happen off of the simple things that you can learn to do too. What happens next transitions really well into the next talking point for this lane. Camille traded her W for GP's Q. You'll notice that Camille is still near full health. We won't stick on this early laning phase for too much longer, but just look at the difference between the starting points for these two. Khan is already miles ahead in terms of health, and the lane has just started. You might also be wondering, what can GP do in this situation? Well, outside of taking a safer path to the lane for the start, he can use Q on Camille when she goes for minions. Even still, it's going to be hard to bully her out of lane with Q spam since she can just heal out of it. If he thinks that he can get an early gank from his jungler, Q spamming her to half health could be a viable strategy. Otherwise, our top lane experts recommend that Gangplank should try to farm up and stay away from Camille whenever possible. As we're watching, Camille gets another great W for Q trade and she's really crushing this lane. The poke coming out from GP doesn't feel substantial at all. However, it looks like Gangplank was able to get Jarvan to 2 buff gank for him. As Camille is running down, Khan makes a move that we thought was a mistake until we kept watching. Yep, Khan actually looked at his XP bar, knows the exact XP range of the dying minion, and decided to move back up to ensure that he gets his level up in order to immediately skill his E to escape. This is absolutely unbelievable presence of mind, and he might save his flash because of it. His flash doesn't end up being saved, but he's able to stay alive by barely dodging the E from Jarvan, who, speaking of, is now dangerously overextended and quickly dies. Now that Jarvan is out of the way, Khan stays in the lane and keeps it frozen. After all, Camille sucks at pushing and he might be able to bait Gangplank into a return gank from Sejuani. He does end up baiting him in and they're able to burn his flash. In fact, Sejuani is able to bait him into moving forward, and they're able to get the stun proc on for a kill. This was super greedy from GP, but it was a split second mistake that was instantly punished. At this point, the best choice is to recall and teleport back, which he does in order to pick up two longswords, a potion, and a ward. Now that Khan is back in lane and with a big lead, the easy decision here is to freeze with a thinned out wave right around this area. This is classic top lane punishment, and we're sure that any top laners watching this have been in the same situation as GP is. He's behind in gold, in XP, down to flash, his jungler is feeding, he's being frozen against, and he has no control of the river in order to break the freeze safely. 
This is an extremely dangerous teleport from Gangplank, and we recommend to never do this when you're behind, no matter how tempting it is to get the XP for this caster minion or how tilted you are. The trade we just saw is exactly why you should teleport to your tower when behind. Gangplank is able to get good trades back, however, but the problem is that the more con trades, the lower health they'll both have, and Khan simply just has more tools to finish Gangplank off. Anyway, we're seeing some great CS denial from Khan. This is textbook denial and is simple to do when you have a lead. All he has to do is threaten Gangplank to step up and take this minion. Maybe Khan won't go all in, but maybe he does. If you constantly make your opponent ask these questions, they're going to feel a lot of pressure and miss more CS. As you saw, he was only able to get one of those three melees and use his only poking tool to do it. This cannon minion is no different. In fact, people will usually overextend for a cannon minion further than they'll ever extend for other minions. Even if it's just a little bit, you can usually punish them for it. It seems like Khan knows this, and he's going to get some good poke onto GP while also denying the cannon minion. As the freeze continues, note Khan's positioning. He's standing close to the wall to land a near instant E onto Gangplank if he ever steps up. This is really Camille specific, but it's something to think about whenever you're freezing on any champ. What tools does your champion have to fight with, and how does the terrain affect those tools? To give you some context, poke champions will stand to the side of the wave to hit skill shots at an angle. Rengar will sit in a bush to jump out from range, and Gangplank will have barrels set up to punish anyone who steps up. Anyway, Khan continues to stand by the wall, and he expects GP to step up and harass him when he goes for the cannon. Gangplank does go for the Q harass, so Khan's reaction is to use the terrain to his advantage for a split second E. As this trade plays out, Gangplank actually played this perfectly, and it finishes it off with a really impressive dodge. You have to keep in mind that these are all Korean challenger players, and if you're thinking about writing that comment in every video about how bad this guy is, you might want to think twice. There's a bunch more cool CS denial happening here, but we want to move on to something new. Now that Khan is level 5 and the wave is pushing in, he wants to look for a good trade and snowball it into diving Gangplank or at least threatening him away from the turret. He gets the E onto the wall with the stun, procs his passive, and lands all of his abilities. Gangplank is now really trunked, but is still staying in the lane. After this next trade, Gangplank is looking really diveable. In fact, if Stopwatch weren't in the game, or if Gangplank wasn't running the mastery for some reason, then we guarantee that Khan would instantly solo kill him under the turret. That said, his E is on cooldown for another 4 seconds, so he isn't able to abuse the timing window before Stopwatch is online. However, he can still threaten Gangplank away from the turret, who probably isn't counting the seconds on Camille's E cooldown. As Khan is pulling the trigger on this, Jarvan is coming from above. Gangplank does an amazing job delaying by cancelling the auto from Camille as he eats an orange and stopwatches, and this ends up leading to Khan's death. Despite this going poorly for Khan, Gangplank still got none of the gold or XP for the kill and lost most of his minions to the turret. In the end, Khan is still up a lot of gold and XP. He heads back into the lane with a Sheen purchase and builds a wave to be crashed into the turret. As he's bringing these minions to the turret, his dead Galio signals that he's on the way with a teleport to back Khan up for a turret dive. Considering this is solo queue, this is truly an amazing play setup. Khan does some light trading and in comes the teleport. We really have to give this Gangplank credit. For how well behind he is, he's still firing back extremely well. He spotted the teleport from Galio, and instantly saw the play coming and aimed to counter it with an ult on the wave. He then dodges around the outside of the Galio knockup, then to an escape path immediately when the Camille ultimate ends to also dodge Galio's Q, and then he flashes out of the taunt. The fact he was able to live from such a coordinated play was insane, and a testament to how good both sides played this. In the end, a fight breaks out in the river, and Camille had set Vision down in the enemy tribrush earlier. This made it easy to see Gangplank coming, and to finish him off with the flash advantage. At this point in the game, Khan and his team had such a devastating advantage that they were able to end the game in just 15 minutes. And it all started with a simple brush cheese. Like we said in the beginning, Khan nearly always cheeses. Sometimes he invades with his jungler, 
sometimes he invades with his jungler in another way, and sometimes he sits in a brush and waits for his opponent. If you take nothing else out of this video, know that the game starts before the minions even spawn, and that you could be losing out on wins by not capitalizing on that fact. Whether you're cheesing, getting a spot reward down, or invading with your team, getting the most out of the first 90 seconds of the game is really important. That's it for this one, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. If you liked the video, please give it a rating and let us know in the comments if you want more.